What's up guys and welcome to Coors Light, a brand new channel that I have been pouring my heart into. Because I've been on YouTube for a long time, but I've been doing the same thing for a long time. And so with that in mind, with this channel, I wanted to do something that I had never done before. And so what we are doing, as you can see on the screen right here, is four two minute segments. And with each one of these segments, the goal is to take something current, such as Damian Lillard's 71 point game, and then take that topic and talk about something you have possibly never thought about before. Which is why the first segment on this channel is going to be none other than a conspiracy As we dive into video footage of Wilt Chamberlain, I just want to present to you the facts of Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game. And they are that number one, there is no video footage of this game. The footage we are currently watching is just Wilt being amazing in general. Number two, there were only 4,124 people in attendance of this game. And here's where things get even stranger. Because fact number three about this game, there was no actual audio recording. The man who called this game was Bill Campbell, a longtime Philadelphia sports radio announcer and he says he is sorry he didn't make a copy of that historic broadcast okay so then going further will called me from los angeles he asked me if i had tape of that fourth quarter which he of course did not as a matter of fact the next morning in the office i got a call from a fan he said on my homemade recorder here at home i have a couple minutes of the fourth quarter including a period where he got his 100th point the rebound luckman bill back to luckman in the chamber Nick's coach, Eddie Donovan, would say, the game was a farce. They would foul us and we would foul them. Chamberlain shot attempts by quarter, 14, 12, 16, 21. Yes, that is right. If you did not know, the fourth quarter of this game essentially was a foul fest because the Knicks were trying to intentionally foul other players and Wilt to prevent him from breaking the record. But then Wilt went and did the improbable slash impossible almost. Wilt also shot 28 of 32 from the free throw line in this game, which is around 87 and a half percent for his career. He was a 51% free throw shooter, 28 of 32. And again, only 4,000 people saw it. Suspicious, which is maybe how Dallas Mavericks fans should feel about Kyrie Irving, seeing as the last few situations with his teams have not worked out, but I'm optimistic. Will Kyrie and Luka work out as a pairing? Let's be honest, only time will tell. So instead of focusing on what could be, let's focus on what has already happened. The last time Luka and Kyrie played each other, aka when Luka buried Kyrie. Now, before we drop into Luka, dropping a 40-point triple-double on Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant's head. Collective heads there. Let's take a look at this quick list, I think, of the three most embarrassing times a former teammate got cooked before then a new star was traded to that team. Now, Kyrie on the 2017 Cavaliers did have 42 points on the Boston Celtics and Jalen Brown. Kobe had 40 points on Ron Artest. They had a great rivalry back in the day. Kobe even did this. Patty A watching Kobe. Scooping, driving, and putting it in! But the best, of course, has to be a Clay versus KD here. As we can see, this is where Game Six Clay was actually born. Clay Thompson had 11 three pointers, which was a record at the time in Game Six of the 2016 Western Conference Finals, which you may remember as the same Western Conference Finals where the Warriors came back from a three to one series deficit. Kevin Durant got embarrassed by Clay Thompson, and then KD somehow ended up on the Warriors. So as we dive into this highlight, as we already know that this list exists, I'm jumping right here. Four point game. Luca drives on KD. Remember, this is one man versus two Hall of Famers. And so as we watch Luca absolutely dismantle the Brooklyn Nets, I want to talk about the fact that it cannot be understated that this game took place, as you can see, on October 27th, 2022. Dallas Mavericks got a one man win here. Luca definitely, definitely cooked himself. But the reason this will always have gigantic significance to me is that for whatever reason, after this game was when Kyrie Irving posted his infamous tweet. It is when the Brooklyn Nets owner then came down on Kyrie and it was after Luka Doncic himself took down the Brooklyn Nets that the Brooklyn Nets ended up folding. That was very coincidental. And again, like I said, I am optimistic for Luka and Kyrie. However, as the thumbnail on this video suggests, while I'm optimistic, I'm also realistic and I'm really rooting for Luka here. I just want Luka to do well because at the end of the day, Luka Doncic represents young greatness. In between segment two and three, guys, I quickly want to say as a thank you for supporting, I'm giving away two 2021 certified Panini 
boxes away. Actually, I'm giving away 20 packs. You have a chance to win a rookie LaMelo Ball or a rookie Anthony Edwards. I'm also going to be opening the packs live, so you'll be able to see what pull you get. Again, all you have to do to enter to potentially get a free Anthony Edwards or LaMelo Ball rookie card or anything that is in this box. All you have to do is click the link below to go to my Twitter. Now let's get back to Coors Light 1. So let's switch over to a segment on greatness. The game is tied at 91. The Pistons take a timeout. LeBron James said that should have been an and one. He a segment on LeBron James, who just recently, of course, passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the all-time scoring list, but also, back in 2007, LeBron James gave us true young greatness. He gave us one of the greatest young performances we have ever seen by a fourth-year player. As on this chart, we have some of the greatest players of all time. We have Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and Dirk Nowitzki. And so right now, 2007 LeBron is not on this list, but after this, we're going to rank him on this list because this is against the Detroit Pistons, who famously won the NBA championship in 2004. So LeBron is going against a team of champions. And I'm just going to go to three minutes left. The Cavaliers are down by seven points. To say the season is on the line would be an understatement. But LeBron drives right to the basket and won. Fourth season LeBron, a team that has already done it in the palace. Oh my. But Pistons come back, drain a three. Here we go. LeBron James. Below by dunk, below by dunk. Game five of the Eastern Conference Finals. Two point game, overtime. What? This is one of the most beautiful jump shots I feel like I've seen. This is a young goat. Any criticism we want to say about LeBron James, he was that guy in the moment. He acted like it. He performed like it. This was his fourth season. And we go to a second overtime. In this second overtime, I cannot stress enough how much LeBron just destroyed the Pistons with jump shots. Watching this tape back right now, that, you gotta be kidding me. Eight seconds left though. He just went, that is four on one. Okay, we'll get, we'll, we, who was off to the side? Rashid? Is that Rashid? Rashid will give you. Ball don't lie. Tape don't lie. You're off to the side. LeBron, four on one. 22 years old, closes the game, 25 straight points to end this game. 25. Heading back to this list, I would put this number one on this list. A young LeBron James was certainly impressive. So were a young James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin Durant. <laughs> You may have heard of that big three before. Looking at this chart of the biggest failed big threes of all time, we have to ask the question. Well, two questions. Number one, Harden, Westbrook, and KD, are they the biggest big three failure of all time? And number two, did Kobe Bryant break the Oklahoma City Thunder apart? Because if you did not know, we are jumping to the 2012 Olympics. We are jumping to my ad blocker getting activated. And as you can see, at 2012 Olympics, Kobe Bryant told Russell Westbrook not to defer to Kevin Durant with the Thunder. So what? What is the story here? Well, Kobe Bryant's career did not end ideally. He had a torn Achilles and he played with Dwight Howard. But the thing is, headed into that super team failure in itself of Dwight Howard and Steve Nash combined with Kobe and Powell, before that experiment, in the 2012 Western Conference semifinals, the Thunder actually matched up against the Lakers and the Thunder just completely destroyed the Lakers four to one. Kobe though was still averaged 31 points per game in that series. He still believed he was going to win a championship. The problem was the Thunder were young and they reached the NBA Finals in 2012, where they lost to the Miami Heat, but they would never reach the NBA Finals again with Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook together. Enter Kobe Bryant. According to Woj, in 2012, what I remember with Kobe was he spent a lot of, or he spent some of, that Olympics with Russell Westbrook telling Russ, you know, you should be winning scoring titles. I don't know why you're letting Kevin win scoring titles. You should be winning them. Anything he could do to plant a little seed of dissent with two teammates. It was pretty funny. Except, as we can see on Basketball Reference, that 2012 season, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook took about the exact same amount of shots, 19.7 for KD and 19.2 for Russ. And if we just click next season here, boom, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> More shots than Kevin Durant. Looking back at this chart, I will say that the Oklahoma City Thunder, I mean, they have three MVPs on their team. They have to be number one. I will go with the 2014 Nets as number two because whatever they did led to the 2022 Nets. And there we have it, guys. Episode one of Coors Light in the books. I really, really hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know what you thought down below in the comments. Please comment down below any segments you are interested in seeing because trust me, one, I'm going to be answering every single comment I see. Two, 
I'm not sure if I've talked posting schedule. What I want to do is use this last minute to really talk about everything, to really get personal, to really cover anything we really need to talk about. But for right now, I just want to say, if you are still here, thank you so much for being still here. You really are truly awesome. Thank you so much. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and turn on post notifications. Brand new channel, brand new grind. You're here from day one. Thank you so much for that. Again, I'm giving away 20 packs with a chance to win a rookie Anthony Edwards or a LaMelo ball. The link to that giveaway is on my Twitter. It is also in the description below. Again, thank you guys for watching. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that Coors Light music. How are you doing, kid? <laughs> 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 Shut up, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>